Welcome to the Introduction to Computer Science, Basic Computing Concepts, Including History. This is Lecture A. The component, Introduction to Computer Science, provides a basic overview of computer architecture, data organization, representation, and structure, structure of programming languages, and networking and data communication. It also includes the basic terminology of computing. The learning objectives for this unit, basic computing concepts, including history, are to define what a computer is, describe different types of computers, including PCs, mobile devices, and embedded computers, define the common elements of computer systems, describe typical hardware and software options for desktop, laptop, and server systems for home and business use, with an emphasis on healthcare systems, and explain the development of computers and the Internet, including healthcare systems, up to the present time. This lecture will define what a computer is, describe different types of computers, and define common elements of computer systems. According to Webster's Dictionary, a computer is one that computes, specifically a programmable, usually electronic device, that can store, retrieve, and process data. Originally, this term applied to people, since they were the ones who performed the first computations. We now use the term computer to refer almost exclusively to electronic devices that do computations. Nevertheless, the definition of a computer is far broader than just a desktop or laptop computer. It also includes any electronic device that can store, retrieve, and process data. The first computers were extremely large and expensive. They were developed by the government, universities, and large corporations. In the 1970s, personal computers were introduced. These were used by businesses and eventually became commonplace by the 1980s and 90s. The first personal computers were desktop computers. Then laptops were introduced. Notebooks and netbooks are basically smaller, lighter laptops. Tablet computers have touch screens and are usually very small and light. Personal computers are becoming faster, more powerful, and smaller as technology progresses. Today, personal computing has become even more widespread with the advent of mobile computing and smartphones. Initially, mobile phones were not considered personal computers but now smartphones have functionality and systems similar to personal computers. They have an operating system, large memory, significant storage, network connectivity, and applications, nicknamed apps. Another type of computer is the large-scale computer. They are very large, fast computers used by corporations and the government. They can store, calculate, and process huge amounts of data very quickly. Mainframes and servers perform multiple tasks on large amounts of data. Supercomputers execute extraordinarily complex computations at incredibly high speeds. Today's supercomputers and mainframes are capable of handling even more data and computations to meet the demand of modern applications. Scientific applications, for example, can become more precise and faster with more computing power and storage. Another type of computer is the embedded computer. Embedded computers are contained within larger devices. They can be found everywhere, and you may not even be aware of them. Anything that has some smartness to it has an embedded computer. Most electronic devices today are actually computers, everything from microwaves to DVD players to MP3 players to anti-lock brake systems. These computers are not general-purpose ones like our desktop computers. Instead, they were designed to provide a specific functionality with very limited input, such as the load, play, pause, forward, and reverse buttons on a DVD player, and very specific outcomes. All computers contain hardware and software. Hardware is what it sounds like, the physical equipment that makes up the computer. Software includes the programs that run on the hardware and make that computer useful. One type of computer hardware is the input device. Input devices allow users to input information into a computer. There are many different ways users can do this with a computer. 
Some examples are keystrokes on a keyboard, mouse clicks, touching a touchscreen, speaking into a microphone, importing files from a camera, touching or writing with a stylus, and scanning a photo or a document. The input is then processed by the computer and the appropriate action is taken. For example, if you click on a button at your favorite online store, the computer does something in response, like add an item to your shopping cart. Output devices display or provide output of some task performed by a computer. When you use a personal computer, you are continually providing input through your keyboard and mouse, and the resulting actions are displayed on your computer monitor. When you're typing a document in Microsoft Word, for example, each keystroke results in a character appearing on your monitor. Similarly, if you are projecting output from your computer instead of using a monitor, the output would appear projected onto a screen or wall. Printers are another way to get output from your computer. Speakers provide sound output, including the beeps and clicks that confirm that input was received. They can also be the sound from videos or music being played on a computer. The motherboard is the central printed circuit board of the computer. It contains the processor, memory, connectors, and expansion slots. We will discuss these components in detail next. The processor, or central processing unit, or CPU, is the brain of the computer. It controls all functions of the computer and performs all of the operations. The CPU's processing speed is measured in hertz. Current systems run at gigahertz speeds, which are equivalent to billions of machine cycles per second. Having a fast CPU will give you a fast overall computer system, but is not the only determinant of the overall computer speed. We will talk about other factors that affect computer performance in addition to processor speed. Finally, modern systems have multiple CPU systems, or cores. Such computers can execute multiple instructions concurrently, which significantly improves overall computer speed. Another part of computer hardware is the computer's memory. There are two types. The first is called read-only memory, which is abbreviated as ROM. Read-only memory is permanent or non-volatile memory. Anything that is stored in ROM will be there whether the computer is on or off. ROM stores system-level programs that have to be available at all times. For example, the computer's basic input-output system, or BIOS, are held in ROM. To learn more about the computer's BIOS, see the unit titled Computer Software. Random Access Memory, RAM, is volatile. RAM is active only when a computer is on and running. Anything that is stored in RAM will not be saved once the computer is turned off. RAM is also known as primary storage, which is where programs are stored as they run. RAM is often just referred to as memory. Too little memory can slow down your computer, and adding more RAM can speed up your computer since it provides more space for programs to run. Remember, RAM holds all programs as they run, but is not where programs are stored permanently. For example, if you are editing a document using a word processor, the word processor is running in memory and your document is being stored in memory as well. That is why you have to save your document for it to persist after the word processing program ends. We have all had the unfortunate experience of not saving a document and having something awful happen, like losing power or having the computer crash. Your document is lost, or at least all your recent edits are. That is because the document was saved only in RAM, and it was not saved to permanent storage. So, where are programs and documents saved permanently? They are saved in secondary storage. Secondary storage is where all programs, data, and files are stored permanently. Internal hard drives store your programs and data that you use often. External hard drives are separate from your computer's case and are often used to back up internal drives. Backing up is the process of making copies of some or all of the files on your computer. Refer to the references slides for additional resources that explain backing up in more detail. When you start a new program, the computer loads it into memory from the secondary storage. 
This process is relatively slow, so computers try to minimize the number of times needed to load or switch programs that are running in memory. The other type of storage associated with your computer is removable storage. This includes optical drives such as CDs, DVDs, and Blu-ray, and USB flash drives. Flash drives are small, portable drives that you can plug into your computer's USB port. All removable storage allows users to store data such as videos, images, and backups. Removable storage also provides a way to transfer data and files from one computer to another. For example, if you took pictures of an event and downloaded the images to your computer, you could save them to a DVD and give the DVD to your friends so that they may have the photos as well. Other parts of computer hardware are connectors and ports. Ports connect peripheral devices to your computer. Examples of peripheral devices are monitors, keyboards, mouse devices, printers, and network connections. A universal serial bus, or USB port, is very fast and is often used to connect these devices. But there are other ports on your computer as well. There are ports for video, audio, FireWire, which is the Macintosh equivalent to USB, and the connections used for networks, such as an Ethernet or modem port. That is a good basic summary of the hardware involved with computers. Now, let's turn our attention to software. Without software, the hardware is virtually useless. The most important software that you have on your computer is its operating system. We abbreviate this as OS. The OS coordinates the hardware with the software applications on your computer. It is the layer between the programs you want to run and the hardware. It also provides a way for the user to interact with the computer. Today, we are accustomed to operating systems that have graphical user interfaces, or GUIs, which means we interact with the computer using a mouse and keyboard. But there are OSs that just use typed commands. Some examples are DOS, Unix, and Linux. There are many operating systems that you might be familiar with. A very common one is Microsoft Windows. You may have also seen operating systems that run on Macintosh computers. And you may have even seen Linux, which is the open source version of the operating system known as Unix. The other type of computer software that runs on your computer is called application software also known as programs. Applications are what make computers useful for everyone. They are the reasons we use our computers for work, social networking, and entertainment. There are so many different types of applications available that it is impossible to list them all. But some examples that you may have used yourself are word processors, electronic medical records or EMRs, spreadsheets, web browsers, and video games. Most software that you run on your computer is application software. There are some other structures that could be considered components of computing systems. Networks and databases are used on many computers and are a combination of both hardware and software. Networks connect to other computers and to the Internet. There are hardware ports on computers to facilitate this. Cables connect computers to routers and to other network connections. The operating systems of the computer and the network coordinate networking activities. Databases are often parts of large applications. You may not have one on your computer, but you may connect to one, especially online. Databases require a server, which is a computer with a large amount of storage, along with a database management system, or DBMS which is the software that makes it work. Databases structure data in such a way that it is quickly and easily stored and retrieved, much faster than from a file or a spreadsheet. Computer software and hardware work together to provide a system that is usable for people. Software enables the user to interact with a computer. Without meaningful, easy-to-use applications, people would not use computers. If the hardware is slow, large applications will not run well, if at all. So, it is important to have a balance of hardware that can support the type of applications that you want to run and applications that are meaningful as well as easy to use. This concludes Lecture A of Basic Computing Concepts Including History. In summary, 
Computers are electronic devices that accept input from multiple sources, manipulate, calculate, and output data. Computers range from personal computers or PCs to large mainframes and supercomputers. Computers are also found in most electronic devices today. All computers are composed of hardware and software. Hardware is the physical equipment of the computer, and software is the applications or programs that we run on computers.